Hi, this is David Philip of the Left Hand Right Winger again, and today I kind of want to give a little shout out to some YouTubers that I respect. Um, I think that's you know, part where I got the idea to do this. Uh, admittedly, there's some jealousy too because they, they they did so well, especially finding ways to come back the kind of the changes in YouTube and the max of viewership and everything else. But they you know they got on early and they did very well with it, and I still watch a lot of their videos today. I'll go with the first one. The one that really got me into it was uh, James Rolfe. The uh, best known as the angry video game nerd, but he's also the uh, uh, proprietor, I guess, of, um, of Cinemassacre. And he's done he does great videos uh, for movie reviews and, of course, the angry video game nerd reviews. Um, I found him because I was just kind of looking up other people that had the same struggles I did with some of the classic uh, video games like Ninja Turtles, Back to the Future, um, on the uh, on the original 8-bit Nintendo Entertainment System. And, you know, he did a great job, kind of kind of a fun, almost laugh way, so I was afraid that this theme song is great, this little, uh, kind of older for my videos, so I'm not going to sing it here, but it's a good song, uh, it is catchy, so if you ever look up Angry Video Game Nerd, or, uh, James Rolfe's Cinema Massacre, great stuff on YouTube, uh, if you haven't seen it, I'd be surprised if you had it, the other one, and I think because there is some overlap, the other guy that I respect is Doug Walker, who does the Nostalgia Critic videos, out of Channel Awesome, which Channel Awesome is a great group of people, he just, he, he does, uh, as far as Doug Walker, he does like a lot of great, really well done uh, film reviews. Um, and back in the day, he used to be able to do a lot more film clips. Uh, and he probably can't quite as much as the same anymore. Um, as his, uh, he had to change the way he does the combat uh, YouTube's uh, lack of respect for fair, uh, for the fair use laws. Um, he actually did a whole series kind of complaining about it, which I, I totally stand by. It seems like, yeah. The, uh, YouTube doesn't really respect the fact that there, you know, there is some amount of fair use when you use a copyright material. Um, and they don't seem to care that it's a lot of protection for the corporate interest um, and not these guys that are legitimately using fair use laws. Um, I guess YouTube doesn't want to get in the mess of it. I think I mentioned that before in another video. Uh, but he took a good, good stand against it. And his way of combating it is pretty cool. Rather than showing a clip of the movie, he can't get right into the clips. Rather than showing the clip from the movie, he, um, he rather than showing the clip, he'll, he'll, um, he has actors from Channel Awesome that will perform out the scenes that he's talking about, and, it, and it, they'll play it out in the way that he, you know, that he finds the the problem with it. And in some ways, I find it more interesting to watch that than watch um, uh, than watch the the, the film it's, uh, than watch the film itself because it's so much more interesting. Um, and also he does this uh, out of Channel Awesome, which um, I do have a lot of favorite people like Walter Benesiak and Tamara Chambers. The other, the other people in there that I, I haven't got to see as much of to really get uh, an appreciation for, uh, but Tamara Chambers with her, you know, you know, Tamara's Never Scenes, uh, Benesiak's you know, top, you know, worst and best, uh, top five worst and best video series, really, really, really well done there. Um, it is a nice set of series. The other one I like, and I can't think of the gentleman's name. It does it, but Cin uh, Cinema Sins, where they kind of he kind of goes through you know certain movies and kind of counts out the sins, whether they did something wrong, they were racist, sexist, they stole something out of another movie, they defy logic in the film somehow. It is a very fun you know kind of way to review a film. He did a lot of good ones. Um, I forget how I found them. I think I was just looking up you know movie reviews, came across it, and was amused by it. Um, the yeah, other interesting one like that, too, um, is, and I can't think of this gentleman either, but he does the Honest Trailers, where he takes a trailer and, and kind of talks point blank about, you know, uh, how, you know, how the film might make somebody feel, sometimes in a bad way, sometimes in a good way, and it's just a lot of fun. It's really well done. Um, the other one, the other gentleman that I uh, like to watch is um, Hip Hughes, who does a lot of um, historical and political uh, Kind of more on the educational side, like he's there speaking as a lecture. Um, I'm guessing he's a college professor on the side, too, or at least a high school teacher, one of the two. Um, but he does a really great job, you know, presenting these topics in an unbiased way. Um, and I particularly, particularly enjoy his election series because I'm a big fan of, like, I love watching them all. Um, and I've seen a lot of documentaries on They're well done documentaries, but what I hate is a lot of them um, exclude uh, the the videos on, uh, or doing a representation of the, sp the small lesser known, like 1804, 1820, uh, 1944, or okay, 1844, 
or you know, they totally forget like the 1916 election. The little ones, the ones like that that aren't as popular, didn't really have any big, you know, dramatic changes in the policy. They, they, they often get glossed over. So it's nice to see a video where you know you could you know kind of get some information, some piece of history that you know that I'm that you know we never knew about um, about these ones because they're, they're not really talked about very popularly in the history books. A lot of good information, but then he also does a lot of political discussions, things from Obamacare to um, I think the older thing like the, the um, spoil system. He has like a whole bunch of different little videos like that. Or talk about policy changes, what this would mean, what that would mean, and he spells out both sides, like he did when I saw reading really on the balanced budget amendment, talking about both sides of the issue, good and bad things. Didn't really stake his claim, although I think he's alluded to the fact that he's a little bit more libertarian in his thing, but maybe why I respect the guy too, because I, I, even though I do, I lean much more conservative, I do have a lot of respect and appreciation for a lot of libertarian views. I consider him more of a fiscal conservative, but a social libertarian. Um, and a lot of a lot of my beliefs um, and ideologies, I probably alluded to in many of it. Hope I have. If I haven't, then I, you know I apologize. But that's that's my drive. Um, is, you know, is giving off that presentation. Um, so those are really great. Um, but you learn what he does for that. The other, other people that really stand out of mind that do a great job. The other one is um, I want to say Rock three one one, or I think his name is Eric Calder. Uh, or Calder. I think it's Eric Calderon. I may be mistaken. But he, uh, what he does is he takes, um, he does like hard rock, heavy metal covers of songs you wouldn't normally hear that way. Like he'll take like a symphony tune or a theme song from a movie or a TV show or a pop tune that you wouldn't expect as a heavy metal version and spin it. And sometimes I'll have the lyrics on it, sometimes he won't, sometimes you just hear the guitar riffs. Like my brother's a favorite one. He does a really, really great heavy metal cover of the theme song from the Beverly Hills Cop movie you know, with Eddie Murphy. The, um, uh, it's called Axel F by uh, Harold Faltermeyer. Great tune in and of itself, but I swear his, uh, Eric Calder's, Calder, Calderon's, uh, Air er Rock 311, that's what you can find on YouTube, version is way better than the original. It's really, really good. Um, and it's a really nice job. And um, he also occasionally pairs with other artists, and one that I found kind of through him uh, was the artist Pelike, who kind of has the same thing, but he also sings in these videos. Um, I would, you know, it's the type of voice, it reminds me of Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden. Um, and he does some really, really good covers, particularly of uh, Disney tunes. Um, you know, singing the uh, songs that you would never, ever think of a heavy metal version of. Like he did a uh, heavy metal version of Under the Sea, and They Just Can't Wait to Be King, you know, from the Lion King movie and Little Mermaid. Um, again, songs you would not think of hearing that way, and he does a really incredible cover of. Um, there's a lot of songs like that you wouldn't hear, and it's nice hearing the, hearing the vocals on them, too. That's, I, I would say kind of plus or minus for Eric Calder. Not all of us have the vocals or his own vocals on or original um, metal vocals for him. He often takes, like, the... I'll say he does take the vocals of a song and put them over it. Um, yeah. And, oh, and I did forget, there is one other guy that, like, does music. Um, Andy, I want to say his name right, Ray Felt or Ref Felt. Um, he does a really novel thing where he'll take a song and remix it as a totally different song. And often I put the lyrics of the original song, like there's a version of Metallica's Enter, I call it Enter Jazz Man. Uh, or he might have called it that too, I forget it, but it's the Enter Sandman song, uh, with same tune, same lyric, uh, you know, notations, musical notations, but it's written as a jazz tune and played as a jazz tune. And you'll hear like James Hetfield singing over it but it's played out as a jazz tune. Really well done. Um, there's a lot of that. He did a, a and it had a, I don't know who her, what her name was, this woman to do um, this really like death metal version of the song from Mary Poppins, Super California, like SB Aladocious. And it's incredible. Yeah, it's like a you know, death metal dude. I'm not a big fan of death metal. I like a lot of hard rock. I mean, death metal's a little far from me. It's really good and it's funny. Listen to them singing this classic Disney tune is a version of death metal. And he also does another variation of that where he'll make like a radio edit, uh, Disney radio edit version of a lot of songs like that. Like takes like uh, Slayer's Angel of Death and does a toned down, very nice, soft guy with the same lyrics. I don't think it's a revamped version of the, I can't think of the guy's name, but the front man from Layton Slayer's voice, maybe his own, maybe somebody else's, but it's very toned down. Like it's like Angel of Death. It's very nice, very soft type of version of the song, but it's all done well. But anyway, that's my, my take on a lot of...